Welcome to uh, my video tutorial, guys. Um, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my followers, you know, they put a comment that they would like to see, uh, you know, some more AngularJS videos on ASP Don MBC, and so I have decided to uh, create create this little video tutorials. You know, um, I'm not gonna go, you know, I'm not really presentation like on a go. I wanna bore you with a bunch of presentation because you know we all <laughs> most of my followers I know they're like computer programmers and geeks they would like to learn the code anyway so basically you know this is my basic introduction and my name is Siba Adhikari and this is my email address right here and if, you know this is my uh, Twitter handle if you want you know get in touch with me or it's an email or whatever okay so in today's this is what I will be covering so well these are the main thing main, uh, main programming component that I'm using today to for this video tutorial demo I will, you know, basically as in as in my previous videos, I will be covering. Um, I'll be obviously, you know, showing a lot of code. That's what I will be doing. I'll show you the demo of my little application that I have written. So basically, you know, for the front end for this little demo, I have you know, of course your JavaScript, HTML file, and AngularJS, and mainly the you know controller service. And I have a custom directive. It's not the custom directive that I wrote, but uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's a plugin. It's a open source plugin that I'm using for a little uh, model pop-up window and just to make HTML better look nice I have used a bootstrap here okay and that and the other thing I would like of course you know that is the client side and the server side of course you know I'm using entity framework for uh, and I, this demo was it, it is uh, this demo was written, written using you know code first design, so I will be talking about some of the configure some of the configuration that I can do, and, uh, I, and why it is considered a good idea to have custom configuration of your you know uh, model first design, rather than having your properties annotated with you know all this kind of clutter annotation clutter. And of course, you know, you need to persist in your data. I'm not really using ASP.NET-MBC web API, just ASP.NET-MBC, and all of them will be just, most of them will be returning the JSON data for the clients. And for the persisting the data, I have simple repository pattern. I will show you that one later. And of course, you know, um, I, I, I love using dependency injection. In this example, I'm using Unity container. I had a, you know, really, um, I have a video I think in my previous, you know, uh, tutorial, I do you need uh, how to do configuration of Unity in the in the ASP.NET MVC project. So I'm not going to go over detail on this. And after that, I'll show you later in the code that I'm using Qs and minor partial views. Okay, that is all about the demo. And after that, um, let's go ahead and start looking at the code. Okay, I I have my Visual Studio open. So bas basically, this is this is the project that I wrote. I, I have been I spent like I don't know like half and half and I don't know maybe three four hours to write this code and stuff. So what I have here I is basically uh, idea is like let's say you have your company you know you have huge amount of vendors that in and then maybe you, you have a need to do a uh, basic vendor management. You know you would like to know that type of vendor they are, you know, their information you like to, sh you know, have in your databases, maybe you need to have appointment of those vendors. Of course, I don't have all those management stuff written, but I have basic template. And that, uh, that is what I'm going to share you today. So, okay, let me, uh, af have after that, let me, uh, having said that, let me go ahead and show you the demo of how this application looks like, okay? And after that, we'll just strictly deal with the code. That then I will be explaining you, uh, providing the hint, hopefully, and some ideas. I, ha um, I, I had already logged in as user. The let's say you come in into this application, and then very first thing of you come you to come here and you log in, right? Uh, I have already registered a user. I'm going to log in at that person. It's a it's a since it's a vendor. Um, Oh, did I even hit the login button? Maybe I did not. Ask. Okay. Now I'm logging into the system. Once you log in, you see two di two of these additional menu options here: vendor category and vendor. The first thing you can do, you can hit the vendor category, and let's say you would like to have additional category of the vendor. You can come in here, 
add a add a new vendor category. Let's say I'm gonna say uh, I don't know, just the imaginary name. Nice vendor. Okay, you come in here, you create this vendor. As soon as you hit the create button, it is created. This is the category name, and then I, I have a little description if you want to put it here. And you can uh, edit this vendor if you want. Let's say um, additional info of the vendor. Okay, or whatever, and then yeah, you can go ahead and hit the edit button. As you can see, this is the editor, okay? And you can do it if you want. And it's a nice little pop up box come out comes out here and says are you sure you would like to delete this vendor is a hit delete oh this is my um well while I was writing code I, I I don't mean to show you that but anyway and then okay now you have a vendor once the vendor is created a um, vendor category is created you can come in here and you can create a um, vendor here I have already created a new vendor here right and then I'm gonna let Let's go ahead and add a new uh, additional vendor here. Uh, this it requires a bunch of information here. Of course, those as you can see, those this comes from the, our previous vendor category here. It's just a drop down here. Nice vendor in town. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Whatever street. Suite one hundred. Uh, say Charleston, South Carolina. To rent imaginary USFA. And into some random phone number. Not correct phone number, of course. Um, it's imaginary phone number. And that email address. And create. I, I have a. I haven't completed this one. Like when I hit this one, you should have close automatically that code is still in progress but I can make sure I can show you that it really worked because um, if I enter F F5 you know in my SQL server right here SQL server 2015 you can see this new vendor created and all these all our data is persisted as you can see here uh, I have this you know the reason I, I did this one the, the the vendor category was pretty simple the schema. It just had a one name and description column, and and, and 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 you know most of the most of the example in the web is very simple. Not like real real life, uh, you know. In, in when you work in real life, you know, a schema is really really complicated. I'm like you know, hello world demo. <laughs> that most of the website that they show you. Uh, anyway, um, and, and this one is very simple. That's why I decided to have a new table called vendor. As you can see, this is little complicated because it had a lot of uh, you know foreign key constraint and this schema is a little more involved than just basic demo example that's why I, I, I decided to have this one here I'm gonna close this one I have to ref of course you know I have to refresh it that didn't refresh it automatically as you can see our new vendor comes in here okay you can look you can click the details button here you can see detailed information about that vendor and you can edit this information so uh, maybe by mistake we put a wrong state and maybe it was supposed to be state of Oklahoma. I don't know, just oh. ah, pretty cool if I go that one. Okay, maybe I didn't do that for automatic closing for that one. Now if I go into it, it yeah, it automatically set it to Oklahoma, which is cool. That is that, and of course, just like uh, you can should be able to delete this vendor if you like, but this code hasn't been completed yet, okay? Okay, this is the basic application. Of course, a lot of features here, but how to write is stuff like this using um, mainly uh, using AngularJS, ASP.NBC, and all of those things, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, start, let's start looking at the code one at a time. That's what I would like to explain to you how it really, really works. Let me first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, let me show you the structure of my code. Of course, you know, this controller is right here, the server-side controller, which is by default, the folder is created when you create an ASP.NBC application. And like I told you, now here is my data access code. I will show you all of them in detail. And like, like, I, uh, like I told you in the introduction, I'm using repository pattern, and I will, I will explain the code and everything. And this is a basic like when